Hey, welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Justin Stoddart. Uh, very excited about today's episode. For uh, many of you that desire to build epic businesses, uh, businesses that uh, stand the test of time, that have a massive impact in the world, there's one little thing that constantly gets in the way of great organizations and great cultures, and that's gossip. And I have with me today an expert on that topic. Uh, before we jump into that introduction, I just want to remind, remind you of some really valuable resources that I put together for the audience. Um, if you go to thinkbigger.realestate, uh, there's a couple of things there I want you to look for. One is the ability to sign up for a weekly email summary. It's going to recap the interviews of the week and give you highlights um, as well as links to the shows so that you know exactly what you're missing out on. Um, secondly, on that website, you're going to find uh, a, some chapter selections from my upcoming book called The Upstream Model, which promises to help you get uh, more referrals um, as well as um, stop shrinking commissions. So super excited about the work that's um, I put together there and the resource that is for you. Uh, so let's get back on topic here. Super excited. Amir, uh, mm -hmm. first and foremost, before I fully introduce you, thank you for being a guest on the Think Bigger Real Estate Show today. Appreciate you. My, my pleasure, Justin. Good to be with you. Yes. Yes. I always enjoy my time with Amir. I've known Amir for for a handful of years now, two or three years now. And um, every conversation I have with him, every interaction I have with him, I leave a little bit smarter. And uh, here's here's kind of some background to Amir. Um, he's a speaker, author, executive business coach, travels around the world. Just tell me about uh, prior to us going live about his trips to Dubai, um, Iran, Panama, just some places where he's been requested by companies and small groups to come do uh, uh, kind of coaching uh, presentations. Uh, just does a great job. He specializes in leadership, communication, and relationships. He's been doing it for almost 20 years and uh, just recently uh, or just uh, on the cusp of releasing his book called Gossip, uh, which is specifically how to break the chain with your family, friends, and coworkers. So Amir, thank you again for being on the show. Very excited about this topic um, because it is a real problem in organizations that want to be great. It keeps them from being great. So excited to go into this uh, episode, this topic with you. Absolutely. So let me, let me um, kind of begin with this. Talk to us, Amir. Um, I know in your book, you kind of highlight uh, kind of the history of gossip, like how it all began. Um, talk to us briefly about that. And then we'll get into some ways that people can really identify if it's happening and how it's happening in their organization, and how to solve it. Sh sure. And so if you look at the humankind, you know, when they came into existence, they did not have a language. So their main priority in life was to, to live and survive. And uh, they didn't have a way of communicating. They, you know, they actually can carry on conversations. When a fire came into existence, when they distinguished fire, uh, then, uh, you know, the people would sit around the fire at night simply to protect themselves from being, you know, being eaten by other uh, creatures. And then when the language came into existence, that, you know, was sitting around the fire, and as the society got bigger and bigger, you know, they were, you know, were able to talk about the day day, their hunt, their farming, and slowly as the community got bigger, they started talking about each other and uh, each other's businesses. And that's basically the beginning of uh, gossip. Now, monkeys in a way gossip in their own way, but it was a form of grooming each other. You know, they were picking each other by, uh, you know, uh, picking the debris or, you know, uh, bugs or what have you. And they would spend, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, most of their day uh, doing that, but that's how they show their love and care. But they did not have the language to be able to add interpretations to something that happened or something that somebody said. Uh, therefore, you know, when human beings started to uh, communicate and started to share about their day and their lives and their friends and their families, and in today's society, in you know, in the companies, uh, you know, the gossip has become a way of living. Uh, you know, a few months ago, when I was overseas, uh, one of the family members said, "Well, you know, we had a conversation about gossip." 
And she said, well, if we don't gossip, then uh, what else do we do? <laughs> so <laughs> definitely you can see that in some societies, gossip is a way of life, is an entertainment. <laughs> and people enjoy doing it, even though they might be actually suffering and they might be miserable because they don't know why it is that they exactly they're doing, but they're getting something out of it. And we can talk about that as well. You know, it's interesting, Amir, that you say that because a lot of the entertainment that uh, we as, at least as uh, Americans consume is gossip, right? Everything from you know, the magazines that people watch, the TV shows that they watch, it's a lot of it is centered around um, entertainment through gossip. And uh, it's it's unfortunate that our society um, has has kind of stooped to that level to where that's kind of a, a, a sport of choice. Um, but I agree with you that there's, there's an untold cost when people engage in such activities, both to their own soul um, and their own happiness, as well as to the organization that they're in. Um, that's a great point is that we've kind of become a culture fascinated with gossip. Like what can be the most, uh, you know, the most sensational story that we can tell about somebody. In fact, it was funny. Um, I, I follow on Instagram, Ashton Kutcher. Uh, I don't follow a lot of Hollywood people, uh, but he's one that I do follow because he has a, a, a big uh, affinity for stopping um, sex trafficking, which is something that I'm, I'm deeply uh, invested in. And it was funny. There was a, a short video of he and his wife and his wife is holding up a, like a kind of a gossip magazine, like us weekly or whatever. And mm -hmm. she looks over and she shows the video to the camera. And she says, Ashton, I didn't know we broke up. He goes, we broke up. That's terrible. Why did we break up? She said, well, there was some big secret that, um, that apparently you weren't telling me. He said, a secret. Did you find out about my secret? It was hilarious. Cause you were totally playing off the fact that this, this, you know, this celebrity magazine, which is just filled with gossip and sells, you know, who knows how much they were just playing it uh, as if, you know, they were hearing for the first time. It was pretty funny. Um, I enjoyed them uh, kind of making fun of um, an entire organization that's based off of, you know, this celebrity sure. gossip, but sure. you're right. It's, it's not just for celebrities either, right? It happens in our families and our, you know, with amongst our friends and our workplaces. Absolutely. And, you know, in this book, we are talking, there's two kinds of gossip. Now, if you are talking positively about someone else, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, instead of making them small, you're making them bigger, you know, I'm not calling that gossip, not in this book. We are focusing on the kind of conversation that makes another human being small, or you can say they throw them under the bus. Uh, therefore, that has an impact. Why is it? someone would do that if something they said or something they did instead of confronting them and getting a resolve why is it that some you know somebody would go to someone else and share about what happened rather than you know uh you know talk to them straight so they are um, some very hidden uh, uh points here as why a person would do it if you look at deeply, and here's another thing, Justin, most people do not want to admit that they are the one that gossip. Hmm. They always think there's somebody else that is gossiping, but not themselves. Why? Because they cannot see it. But the moment you get present to why, you know, for example, I gossip about someone else, when you see it in yourself, the why am I doing? There must be something there really juicy that will have me go to Justin and you know and tell you about so and so. So if you look at deep, and this is something that is really hidden and most people don't see it, it makes you be what? It makes you be in a certain way that have you do it. It makes you be right. And it is that righteousness about something that happened or something that was said that will make a person not confront the person. Why? Because they want to continue to be right. And when a person is right, most of the time they are miserable because it's sucking so much energy out of them. Uh, but they did, you know, they rather be right than you know, doing something about it. And they want to keep that going. 
Now, there is a huge impact here. As I just mentioned, when somebody is like that, is miserable. You, you look at it, their face, they're not fully alive. Why? Because the energy is being used for something else rather than, you know, uh, being really productive. It costs them even their health because it's, you know, it's internally going on. It's costing them their friends and family around them. It costs them satisfaction of life, even for of life. And not knowing that all these impacts are going on, I'll call them these are the hidden impact of uh, gossiping. Until someone really wakes up and looks at themselves and say to themselves, oh my God, I am doing this. I am talking about someone else or I'm throwing them under the bus because I'm right about it. I've been right about whatever that happened. And if they start to look at the impact, how am I? Am I really living my life fully right in this moment? They will find out absolutely not. Mm. And that will be the first step, step to become responsible and be change the chain. So if I understood you correctly, it sounds like um, the reason why we gossip, and I'll, I'll say we because we all do it to some degree, right? Some of us more than others. I would imagine it's rooted in some sort of insecurity in our own selves that we have to fabricate something or perpetuate something that we might not know to be true. So that like you said, we can be right. We can be someone who has insider information, right? Someone who has kind of the inside scoop that makes people attracted to us, makes pe people want to come to us. Like we, we must be lacking some sort of self-confidence that we have to we have to do that in order to get attention. Is that is that what I'm understanding? Very good, very good. Yes, you 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 know you said it almost perfectly. Now, when I come to you or someone comes to someone else and talks about you know some somebody else, what they're doing, they are building up more justification. They're like recruiting mm -hmm. people to be on their side. And as as you said, as they you know build up this uh, you know uh, group of people they bring their self-confidence a little up and they are not present to the damage of what's happening here so more justification they they have more reasons they have more people they have on their side more you know stronger they become about the point that they have made and to be right about that you know whatever that is that is going on between that person and and the person they're gossiping about so it really interesting to hear kind of why people do that, why we do that, right? I won't put myself above the fact that of, of, of gossip. Um, how do you know, Amir, when you maybe can, like, like when you have a problem internally, in, in, like in your organization, when you can say, look, we've got a problem with gossip here. Is there some way to kind of identify the fact that maybe it happens amongst everybody, but there's probably a group, uh, there's probably a certain point where, enough is enough and and like you need to nip it in the butt right away any thoughts on that yes absolutely um so you know th this is something that when the management is not paying close attention to what is actually happening in the company and they are not listening to the employees you know you can say this is this could be the beginning of uh, gossip because uh, the employee will go to someone else and express their you know displeasure about the management and uh, pretty soon uh, you know a rumor starts and uh, uh, after a while the whole uh, company becomes uh, polluted so it is uh, important to uh, pay attention to the kind of conversation that are actually happening in the, in, the, in the company, if the management pays close attention to how the people are treating each other, and this is really important, that having gossip, no gossip, be part of the company's policy. This is you know, the first step. You know, one of the signs that often people uh, um, distinguish or get present to something is happening and it's becoming damaging is people start to live. People who do want to participate, do not want to participate in gossip, they'll leave the company. Mm. 
the level of productivity goes down. Uh, people do not go to management with their issues. They go to each other for their issues. You see people in a group or quietly having conversation about something that or somebody that is going on in the company. So it, it is when the relationship between the management and the employees has broken. That is also you know, another uh, way of you can uh, tell that you know, uh, gossip is starting to uh, kind of uh, you know, take over. Yeah, it's it is interesting. You know, I work a lot with um, real estate agents and even larger to small size real estate teams. It is interesting how sometimes when the owner of a company is or the owner of a team, team leader, is blindsided because somebody talented leaves their organization, and it's like, what just happened there? Like, why did they leave? Right? Maybe um, I would venture to say that in some instances that has to do with the culture, uh, maybe in all instances or, or to some degree that there's a breakdown in culture and quite possibly there could be some gossip happening. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, a, um, they have done some, uh, scientific research mm -hmm. and they have found that 21% um, of people regularly on a regular basis, they gossip at work. Hmm. And 15% wow. occasionally you know, gossip, but 86% of gossip is regarding their company. Hmm. So this, this is a high number. So you know the, the other 14% might be they're talking about, I don't know, someone else's uh, you know, relationships or whatever they have done in the company but the most part 86 percent of the conversation is about the company so if a company wakes up a little too late which i have worked with you know such companies it is so um uh, polluted that the company uh, would not have any choice but really terminate terminate a lot of uh, position to uh, to clean up or start a program, which I did, and which it took about three to four months to really clean it up and get people responsible. Because it's not going to be you have to be responsible or they have to be responsible. I have to be responsible. And when each I becomes responsible about, I am the one that doing it. I'm the one that complaining. I'm the one that gossiping. And I am willing to, you know, uh, alter this then you can expect something great to happen. Hmm. And it can be done by education. It can be done by conversations. And I encourage the people who are managing people to start with the individual conversation and then group conversations. And they're really getting present and bring people who are, you know, uh, specialized in this topic, have them really work with them to see that this is a behavior and a behavior can be altered. And you know, just like any other behavior, scientifically has been proven. If you take a behavior and work on it committedly, you can alter it, average 66 days. And that is, you know, that is pretty rewarding. Yeah. If I can change my behavior in 66 days, I'm committed to work on it regularly, then easily in 66 days, you can alter the whole environment, a whole company. Is there a conversation, Amir, that someone should have? I mean, that's what you've described is what should ha happen to a company that has this problem and is now trying to fix it, which I think is great because sometimes I think, you know, some some owner's response is let's just fire everybody and start over, right? What you're saying is it doesn't have to be that way. People are actually trainable. Um, what What advice would you have to somebody who's either starting the hiring process or in the process of adding a new position? Is there some conversation that, and maybe it's just hand them a copy of your book, right? But is there some conversation you could have with people coming in the door to say, hey, this is our culture. This is how we deal with this particular, you know, this potential threat of gossip. Absolutely. Yeah, I am. You know, I'm working. We are getting very close to have this book uh, be uh, published. And I will invite the, all the human resources to have a copy of this book. And when they hire a new employee, have them read the book and have all the employees that are currently working 
to also read the book. But regardless of having this book or not, it is important to have a policy that gossip will not be in any form or shape tolerated. Mm -hmm. And it's important if they do find someone who does gossip, they must stick with the conditions for gossiping. And if they don't, if they don't take any actions, then you know it will continue, and uh, you know it will take over the whole, the whole company. Mm -hmm. But I think it starts with a simple, basic policy and a conversation. But most of all, if a employee feels that he's coming to into another family and is treated like a family, and not as an object, and they have no fear to express what they need to express in regard to the company, to the management, that would be the biggest step for any employer to prevent, you know, any type of gossip and happening in the future. Mm, powerful stuff, Amir. I love it. Um, I'm excited to get a copy of your book. As soon as it releases, please uh, let me know. I'd love to find it, get a copy and read it. I'm going to put up here, Amir, your contact info. Um, for those that are also interested in being updated as to when the book releases, Amir at coachingcollaborative.net. Um, again, if you um, are a real estate agent listening to this and you know that that um, this is definitely something you don't want in your organization or you fear that it is already there, uh, Amir will be a great resource for you. I would also encourage real estate agents to think this way, is that uh, by having a copy of this book, you're interacting with people who own businesses, people who run organizations, who are in management leadership positions, right? They're your clients. And for you to, to have read this book and be able to direct people to it makes you more valuable. You're no longer just marketing uh, you know, homes, but you're becoming a true resource to help your clients have better businesses, better lives. Um, so I would encourage you to think about it this way. This is a, a topic, again, that plagues our society and families and organizations. And I love, Amir, you put so much time and attention. I've, I've respected your your mind and your heart for a long time. And uh, I think uh, this is a topic that I wasn't aware that people were addressing. Uh, but after hearing you talk about it, um, I'm really grateful that you have. I'm grateful you've spent the time on it because I do think that it can make a big difference when this is eradicated. Um, let, me, let, me kind of, let me kind of close with this final question, Amir, which is uh, kind, of the, the, um, kind of the main question of the, of the show, which is what we want to get from people in addition to your particular expertise, which you've shared so well. Uh, but what does Amir do? You're obviously a big thinker. You're traveling around the world, coaching organizations, doing some amazing things. Uh, what do you do to remain being a big thinker, to, to be sure that your possibilities are constantly expanding? What advice can you give to me and to the rest of the Think Bigger audience um, that would encourage us to want to go think bigger? Very you good. You know, I love the, uh, the title of, you know, big thinkers. You know, uh, big thinkers are not necessarily born. You know, uh, any human being can wake up in the morning and create being a big thinker. And, uh, you know, and when you open your eyes in the morning, you can actually create who you are in, the, in, in, in your world and what your life is about. Mm -hmm. So I invite people, if they are playing it small, and if they think they are not capable of doing certain things, start to think way bigger than themselves. They have to just envision a new future. And when, when I wake up in the morning, I can create my day. I can create how my day is going to go. And if anything comes up during the day that does not go the way I wanted to, but how I created myself in the morning, that creation as a way of being can help me get through the day. Hmm and can help me you know, think bigger than myself and look at everything as a small issues. Not given, but the moment people give in, they become a victim of an issue. And they don't realize that they have control. You have all the power. All you have to do is create it. And how you create it is by your language. If there was a language, we wouldn't have any problem. Therefore, you got the language, create yourself. Say, who I am is this. Who I am is powerful. Who I am is healthy. Who I am is uh, inspiration. Who I am is loving. And it's a matter of my word. Now, my word will carry me through the day? Absolutely. And that's a, that's a powerful way of creating. 
you know, your life, your day, any day of, you know, any day of the week. Amir, that is big thinking gold right there, what you just shared. I absolutely love it. We're going to have to get back on another episode and talk more about this mindset of creating through language. I think uh, I've forgotten about our previous conversations around that and just like remember now what a gold mine you are when it comes to creating your own reality is that you're a creator and you can create it. And if you don't like what you've created, guess what? You can create something else. You can create something different. You can be a big thinker. Um, So I love that. Thank you so much again. I want to just let you know how much I appreciate um, again, the work that you've done um, done around gossip and uh, what you've poured into the Think Bigger uh, real estate audience today. It's been a total pleasure. Oh, you're welcome, Justin. It was a pleasure being with you. And uh, to the audience, I have uh, one more request, um, which is this. Go think bigger. Thank you again, Amir. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you.